Hi everyone, my name is Theodor Mitev and in this short lecture I will discuss an important stage in developing your digital artifacts that is the stage of defining your problem statement. This is the third lecture in my series uh, on digital artifact development following the lectures on thinking in which we discuss conceptualizing your project and observing in which we discuss finding, observing and uh, understanding your users. Um, and this third lecture on defining builds on those uh, two lectures that uh, uh, I already recorded. And it's important to emphasize that the stages uh, are part of a continuous developmental process, right? So they are not discrete, they're part of a, a process which is actually cyclical. In addition, the defining stage uh, is in a feedback loop relationship as it were with the previous stage of observation because uh, as your observation of your users and your audience improves as you gather more insights and have a better understanding of your users needs you are able to better define a problem statement so for our purposes the defining stage uh, is the stage where you synthesize your observations about your users into an actionable problem statement, right? So this is not a one-off. Ideally, uh, as you go through the cycle of uh, producing content and testing it with your users and uh, 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 evaluating the feedback that you've gotten from testing, you are refining the, the problem statement and you are refining um, all the steps that you've undergone already at this uh, stage, the defining stage. And this is reflected in, the, in this feedback loop graph. You, as you can see, uh, we started with observing, uh, the stage where you are trying to understand uh, your audience and get uh, better insights about their needs and uh, about how they do things, um, how they consume content in the context of digital artifact development. And uh, following that, we are now in the defining stage in which you define a problem statement, you synthesize all that you've discovered, all the insights and needs, etc., that you've discovered uh, into a problem statement, uh, based on which you start ideating in the next stage possible uh, types of uh, content that you can develop, possible solutions to this problem, as it were, uh, which you will later start prototyping, which is to say making uh, uh, prototype samples of, uh, for testing and then you would uh, continue to uh, test them with your audience observe the feedback that you've gotten and refine through the defining stage ideate again so this is a continuous feedback loop of content production so if you recall we ended the previous lecture the lecture on uh, the observation stage with uh, this uh, uh, series of tasks that uh, we asked you to go through uh, that is to say, uh, first to synthesize all your observations into a few actionable needs you have discovered. These needs have to be verbs, ideally, uh, things that lead to some sort of action, right? They identify opportunities uh, or openings for additional content or some sort of uh, gap that uh, your project can uh, fill. In addition to that, we ask you to um, uh, collect insights about your audience that you find interesting. And uh, this insight should be framed as actionable discoveries, as something that you can directly um, leverage in your project, something that is compelling, something that is uh, revealing, if you will, um, about your audience. Now, as it happens, these uh, uh, tasks uh, um, are actually the building blocks for the defining stage, right? So you can see how one stage flows into the other. And uh, when it comes to defining your problem statement using those needs and insights, you have to uh, build, as it were, on observations uh, about all sorts of different aspects of uh, your user's uh, online behavior, right? Or offline behavior for that matter, depending on your project. So think in terms of what your users do, right? So the kind of actions they undertake. Think uh, in terms of what they say. This might be in direct uh, conversations with you. This might be in terms of uh, uh, online comments. This might be in terms of user comments to other content that you want to uh, 
use as uh, a guidance for your own content. Uh, this might be uh, your insights about user emotions uh, and feelings as demonstrated uh, uh, by, again, their actions, by uh, their uh, online comments, by uh, the way they uh, interact with content. Try and gain insight into how your users uh, uh, think about the world. Hence, this is, uh, this is why we're asking you to continuously uh, return to the stage of observation and continuously uh, populate your uh, defining stage with uh, um, insights about your users. It might also be useful to literally just use a, a simple piece of paper and divide it in four and try and populate it with um, as much insights, as much information as possible that you have gleaned from your users about the ways they do things, what the things they say, the way they feel about things and the way they think about them. And uh, try and use this as your uh, starting point for the next step. And the next step, if you recall, and we've discussed this already, is uh, this notion of developing a detailed frame of your users, a frame which allows you to, at a snapshot, uh, capture the, co the complex uh, patterns and associations and uh, um, elements that uh, build up how your users think and their perception of reality. So remember that framing here, the way we're using this concept, stands for uh, organizing idea or story which uh, simplifies complexity, the, com the enormous complexity of uh, uh, informational reality and uh, uh, classifies uh, uh, that information according to selection and salience in order to provide meaning. And uh, the specific tool that we use, it's a conceptual tool that we use to develop these frames is uh, this notion of the starter pack, if you recall. We ask you to specifically think about patterns of relationships between building blocks of your user's uh, perception. So think in terms of objects, feelings, uh, uh, doings, right? So how they feel, how they do things, uh, what they say about things, um, and, or any other associated phenomena which frame the overall perception reality of your users. And when you're building uh, that starter pack, it's really important that you watch for associative change. So do not uh, imagine for a moment that these the elements uh, with which your audience or your users associate are somehow operating in isolation, in a vacuum, as it were. They always build associative change. That is why they're part of that frame. Try and recognize those patterns. Try and recognize those frames. Look for the way users uh, attach emotional meaning to them and look for the ways they use them in practice. Those patterns of relationships, those uh, associative chains. This is what we mean by functionality. So this is really important because these are your openings for actionable insights about um, the users. As an aside, a really important point Many students make the mistake of approaching this as a humorous activity, as it were, which it can always be, but uh, this is besides the point. The point here is not to somehow ironize or satirize uh, an audience or a user group. The point is to gain deeper understanding about how they perceive reality, how they operate within reality, because only using that understanding, you'll be able to generate content and provide solutions for that specific user group, for that specific audience. So once you've done all of that, uh, and you remember we finished the last lecture uh, with uh, this specific point, you should be making a starter pack, a frame, uh, which should be as detailed as possible. And this frame should be uh, trying to capture your prospective audience. Look for patterns, look for the patterns, look for the associative chains, and develop that frame. It should be as detailed as possible, uh, featuring uh, everything ranging from everyday objects to uh, uh, feelings to uh, opinions uh, to uh, actions right which form patterns of behavior right this is your the matrix through which you understand your users and the second stage here is to make a startup pack which positions uh, your digital artifact your project the kind of content you're generating the kind of solutions you're providing within that user group or, or audience's starter pack. So you need to try and uh, reframe that original starter pack in, to include your project, to include your content, to include the solution you're providing. So once you've done that, you have now the defining ingredients for your 
problem statement. And your ingredients are first the user needs that you've identified. So again, these are the uh, specific uh, needs that you've identified in your observation stage. They should be framed as verbs. You, you can imagine them as a mapping of uh, uh, openings where your project can come in and provide a solution or, or generate content, plus your insights about the audience, right? So all of these patterns of behavior that we already identified, uh, that we, we that uh, you should be thinking about in terms of uh, uh, actionable insights. And then finally, plus your user start pack that you've developed as, a, as, as detailed as possible mapping of who your users actually are. So once you have those three ingredients, you can start uh, framing your problem statement. Uh, and this is the uh, key, the essential point of the defining stage, framing your problem statement. Remember, this is a cyclical process. So this is iterative. It's not a one-off. Do not be discouraged if you uh, find yourself uh, unable to frame it as coherently as possible at the first or second or third go. This is an iterative process. So providing uh, insight about uh, users' needs and uh, uh, an actionable, compelling insight. So the statement looks something like this. You have your users, and here is the starter pack, which, de uh, which uh, uh, defines your users. Your users need to something. Here comes a verb, something which is an opener towards uh, an action, because insight. And this is where your insight comes in. and um, uh, the insight that uh, uh, is actionable and that leads to uh, something that you can make. So users need something because insight. So for example, uh, my users, uh, and now comes the starter pack, who are interested in uh, handcraft and uh, Japanese origami and green tea, etc., 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 need uh, a way to make uh, origami from everyday materials uh, in all sorts of situations because this is a really good way for them to um, indicate their creativity uh, and to uh, uh, communicate, communicate uh, uh, maybe affection or to uh, provide uh, entertainment. And so you have generated, uh, in effect, a um, statement which allows you then to say something like, based on that, I can make something. Right. So what follows immediately after your generation of the statement, users start back need verb because insight, actionable and or compelling is to ask the following question. How can I or how might we make something based on that statement? Right. So this is how your uh, this is basically the, the key algorithm of the defining stage. You're providing a problem statement uh, which automatically leads to a question of how can I make something based on that? Right? And then you start the process of uh, the next stage, which is the stage of ideation. So this is really important because, uh, again, you should not be treating uh, these stages as discrete. They're part of a continuous flow, a continuous process, which is cyclical. So uh, one stage fluidly leads into the other. Uh, and I want to emphasize this again. When you're framing your problem statement, it should be directly leading you to a question of what can I make based on that, right? And it should, in fact, be directly leading you to a, a range of ideas of making, right? So uh, iterate through a problem statement until this secondary question of how can I make something, how can we, uh, how might we make something is uh, uh, flowing out uh, from, from the problem statement, uh, as it were, automatically and uh, is providing you with ideas. Okay, so Provided you've done that, um, there's a few things that I wanted to point out as uh, really important that you should keep in mind when it comes to the defining stage. First of the first and foremost, uh, remember that making is uh, uh, always involves risk, and I already covered this in the first lecture. Remember that you are always engaging with some sort of resistance, and that resistance is uh, first and foremost provided uh, by the medium you're using, um, by uh, the tools you're using, and by obviously your users. And all resistance encountered should be treated as feedback. Uh, this is really important. It shouldn't be your resistance shouldn't be treated uh, as uh, obstacles which are preventing you from doing something. They should be treated as feedback which you directly reintegrate into your developmental process. Uh, feedback which leads to iteration. In other words, this is fundamental. 
Why? Because um, this is a great quote by Brown and Wyatt from Design Thinking for Social Innovation. Projects usually falter because they uh, never prototype, they, they are never uh, framed in order to generate feedback. They are uh, always framed to stay away from feedback, in fact. Uh, so this is an immediate path to failure. Uh, so uh, I'll read the entire quote because it's really good uh, for our purposes. Time and again, initiatives falter because they are not based on the client's or customer's needs and have never been prototyped to solicit feedback. Even when people do go in the field, they may enter with preconceived notions of what the needs and solutions are. This flawed approach remains the norm in both the business and social sectors. So again, needs and uh, they saw the importance of needs and the importance of prototyping in order to solicit feedback. And uh, you might recall, uh, we already discussed this in previous uh, lectures, all content you generate, both in uh, these initial stages uh, and down the track when you start uh, uh, prototyping and testing, should be entirely aimed at engaging with your audience. And engagement here is yet another word for feedback. Uh, you should be using every opportunity to, to get uh, feedback from uh, your audience. Why? Because absent that feedback, you're operating in a vacuum and that's a direct road for failure. Uh, it's a lost opportunity. Uh, when it comes to a digital artifact, do not release content aimed at nothing. All content should be aimed at connecting and engaging with your target audience. All right, guys, thank you for listening. Uh, that's all from me. As usual, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter at TedMeetYou um, and see you online.